Hey everybody, hello and welcome. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Jim and I react to all sorts of fun stuff on the internet and lately I've been sinking my teeth into Pakistani music. Yeah, I just finished up Coke Studios season 14 and uh, man, that was a beautiful journey. But now I wanna learn more about the people, the geography, the history, the food. And what better way to do that than with one of my favorite YouTube channels, Geography Now. If you guys are new around here, please consider liking and subscribing. Let's let the guys from Geography show us what Pakistan's really about. Here we go. All right, Pakistan. You've probably heard of this guy, maybe in the news, maybe in literature, maybe in movies. Pakistan is sort of a societal paradox. It's only a little over half a century old, yet it retains history that predates the pyramids of Egypt. There's so much to cover, so pack your bags and stand on this bus ride to Pakistan. Ooh. I love the questionable jokes. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Pakistan is kind of like the bridge between the Middle East and the rest of Asia. It is the only nation in the world known to have been established on the basis of religion alone. Well, what about me? I mean, originally kind of, yes, but you were like one unit with Pakistan and then you got a second independence based on you not liking Pakistan. Oh yeah, that's right. By the way, you should really redo my episode. It's completely outdated and you totally stole that map from Jay Foreman. Oh, I met up with Jay in London. We had a jolly live stream chat and laughed about it. Calm down, he's cool with me. It's true, I am cool with it. I'm not really cool with it. Anyway, time for Pakistan. Pakistan, Pakistan. It's interesting because even the name, which means pure land, is even oh. an acronym for the five former regions of British India that join together. Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, Sindh, and Baluchistan. Pakistan! Later the I was added to just help with pronunciation. Anyway, the map. Really? Pakistan is located in South Asia, surrounded by Iran, Afghanistan, China, and India. With this the much I know. Sea and Gulf of Oman in the south. The country is divided into four provinces and three territories, including the oh. capital Islamabad that acts as its own territory. Keep in mind the northern really? territory are administratively operated under Pakistan's government, but India still claims parts or most of them. The country's really? largest city and former capital, though, is Karachi in the Sindh province, with about 15 million people. It holds the largest and busiest airport, Karachi Jinnah International, and the largest shipping port, the port of Karachi, which handles about 60% of the nation's cargo. However, the largest deep sea port in the world is actually here in Gwadar. Recently, it has been going over massive renovations and construction funded by the Chinese as a means to help with access to the Indian Ocean. The the nation's second largest city is Lahore in the Punjab province, which holds the third busiest airport, Lahore Alama Iqbal International. The country has a vast wide rail network extending from Karachi to Peshawar in the north, with branch lines extending to Iran, Afghanistan, and a proposed line that goes up to China. However, it would be very difficult considering that there are incredibly high mountains up further north, and today there is only one main road that crosses over from Pakistan into China. The N35 highway, road? otherwise known as the Karakoram Highway, the world's highest paved road at over four 4,000 meters above sea level. 4,000 meters above sea level. Yikes. <laughs> There's only one road? That's kind of crazy into China. This one little road is the life-giving artery on the 523-kilometer-wide yeah. border that gives China access to the Indian Ocean and Pakistan access to the east, circumnavigating around India, which otherwise blocks them both. Yeah, I mean, it's really not hard to understand why China and Pakistan get along. It's like... Give me access to the west! Ugh. Nope. And now my favorite part of any- There's something going on there that I don't quite understand. I don't get it. Maybe I just learn, need to learn more about the history. Episode, Territorial Anomalies. Now, All if you right. ask someone to draw the map of Pakistan, you might get a lot of different images depending on who you ask. Some might draw really? this, some might draw this, and those that don't know what maps are might draw this. But in regards to the Pakistani administered areas, as we discussed before, this whole region is disputed with India, and it is the site of the most militarized area on the planet. Oh, shit. Okay, now I see what they're talking about. It's in dispute? Damu and Kashmir. In a condensed explanation, in this area, Pakistan and India want all of this. China just wants these parts. Pakistan and India had three wars. They drew a militarized line over here between India and Pakistan. Pakistan relinquished their claim to the Shaksam Valley over to China, but India did not agree and still claims it. All oh, Jesus. <laughs> so is India pissed off at China now? All the while, all three countries converge on the Siachen Glacier, the second largest non-polar glacier in the world, on point NJ9842, and the dead man zone begins where nobody dares to do anything. This so it seems like most of this region is kind of, well, not at least the northern part of the region, is like in the mountains and like the, the Arctic, where nobody can go, the dead man zone. I wonder why China even wants that little sliver of land. There must be something important there. Wow, okay, I... Psh. I feel like an idiot, you know, but I'm a basic ass American. I just don't know about a lot of this stuff. Maybe I should. 
I guess that's what I'm trying to do right now is just figure it out. But wow, okay, I had no idea. This is probably the most tense border point in the world. So yeah. there you go, confusing border stuff and weird tension with Chinese alliance. Pakistan! Some of the top spots you guys, the Pakistani geography suggested we mention in this video include places like Faisal Mosque. Oh my god, look at that mosque. Whoa, this is one of my most, like, the most fascinating things about this YouTube channel to me, is they always, like, show, like, some of the cool architecture and everything. Dude, that is beautiful. Mosque, the Shandur Polo Grounds, the most dangerous hanging bridge. <laughs> most dangerous hanging bridge. What the hell is this thing? <laughs> Anybody ever use this bridge? No way I would step foot on this thing. Hell no. No way, dude. <laughs> Look at this part. This part's all rickety and shit. Oh my god. Uh, whoops. No, yeah, no way. <laughs> That's gotta be the scariest looking bridge I've ever seen in my life. If you've been to this bridge, or you've even traveled across it, let me know. I wanna hear. That's ridiculous. It is huge, too. Bridge in the world. Shangri-La Lake. The oh my god, Shangri-La Lake looks beautiful. Gotta go back. You guys, the Pakistani geography suggested we mention in this video include they go places so fast. like... I That's saw cool. A mosque, the Shandur Polo Grounds, cool. the most dangerous hanging bridge in the world. Sh this Shangra Lake. Oh my God! Talk about a screensaver, dude. Look how gorgeous that is. It's like in the shape of a heart too. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Oh, with the mountains and stuff in the background. This is gorgeous right here, man. Oh, that is. Oh, all right, I can look at that all day. Shangri La Lake, the ship breaking yard. The shipbreaking yard. Okay, looks like there's some abandoned ships that have washed ashore. It's a massive, what looks like an oil ship or something. Yard of Gadani. There's so many. Am These are the the amusement parks. There, he's saying. There's the Chunky Monkey. Never heard of it. Sinbad Park. Only Sinbad I know is a '90s actor here in America. Joyland, Pandaya, and Aladdin Park. Okay. Amusement parks like these. There are so many forts like these. It's kind of cool looking. You gotta wonder how like how, how old these things are too. He was saying like some of like like Pakistan is like older than some of the pyramids in Egypt. These. There's even some Hindu. Oh my God! Look at that water, dude. Look at that water. It's like so peaceful, and just oh my God. The M Temple that looks old as hell. Sites like these. Of course, there are so many tombs. And these are like the tombs, so I wonder if these are like older than the, uh, probably not older than the, the, um, the pyramids, but still. I don't know, man. Dude, I, I love the paint job, too. <laughs> the colors are something else. Then mausoleums, here's a bunch of them. There's St. Patrick's Cathedral in Karachi, Changa Manga, Lahore Museum. Lahore Museum, that looks gorgeous. Um, Karachi War Cemetery, all of these UNESCO heritage UNESCO heritage sites. Okay. Dude, look at the gardens on this thing. Sites, as well as these major archaeological sites. Yeah, you can see that there's a lot of backstory hidden within the valleys of Pakistan, and it goes way back to a very important river. Which brings us to... Pakistan's landscape is incredibly diverse. If you look at Pakistan from above, you'll notice it has some very prominent and distinctly contrasting features. And it's very interesting how Pakistan used these features to their advantage. For one, Pakistan is kind of precariously situated right at the convergence of the Indian, Arabian, and Eurasian plate zones. This is what has created the dry hilly area known as the Suleiman Range and the Baluchistan Plateau in the southwest. Despite the Baluchistan province, the largest one, taking up about 44% of the country's land, only about 6% of the population lives here. This effectively makes Baluchistan and Azad Kashmir, the earthquake capitals of Pakistan. The capital of Baluchistan, Quetta, was nearly destroyed in 1935, yet rebuilt. In the north, you can find the tallest peak, K2 or Chogori, the second tallest mountain in the world, straddling the border with the disputed Shaksam Valley that both India and China claim. Keep in mind, five of the 14 tallest peaks in the world, known as the 8000ers Club, are located in the north of Pakistan, four in the Gilgit Baltistan no territory alone. From I there had no going idea. south, you see the one iconic powerhouse lifeline of the entire nation, the 
in this river. Fed by snowmelt from the mountains up north, this is the longest river in the nation that has dozens of branches and tributaries that essentially feed the entire country. In fact, the Indus River Basin is the world's largest irrigation system with over 58,000 kilometers of canals, cultivating over 230,000 square kilometers of land. Further Very south, cool. you find the largest natural lake in the country, Manchar, along the edges of the Indus Valley that flow into the Indus River Delta with the Keti Bundur South Wildlife Sanctuary. This is the most heavily forested and wildlife concentrated area of Pakistan that is not commercially exploited. Also, it is really hard to build harbors here because the swampy mangroves make it difficult. Finally, a skip to the east, you hit the Tarpakar Desert, which claims to be the world's only fertile desert with a dry landscape, but abundance of water sources that nourish the myriad of shrubby plants and wildlife. Just zoom in and you can find small ponds and creeks meandering throughout. Interesting. Look at that water, man. It's, it's, they all have like this like emerald color to them. I guess that's the moss or something in the water. But the entire area well across the border into India. Now keep in mind, within all this stuff, there's a ton of cool notable sites, such as the Hingle Mud Volcanoes, that lake that looks like a teardrop, the Biafo Glacier, the Fairy Meadows, <laughs> the second largest salt mine in the world. And Dude. there's so much more, but yeah, I'm done here. I need. Yeah, no, I guess he's right, man. You guys got a very diverse like landscape. When I thought of like Pakistan and stuff, I just automatically assume kind of like deserty area. And again, that's just coming from my basic ass American knowledge from what I know uh, about Pakistan, which is very little apparently. Uh, but yeah, apparently the landscape is just wild. I need a triple shot of espresso break, which means, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh Noah. As you can probably guess by now, Pakistan's land is not only loaded with contrast, but resources as well. Over 40% of the population is employed in agriculture and livestock, where wheat and cotton are the major crops. They actually rank fourth in the world for cotton production and third in goat meat. Pakistan is actually one of the largest textile producing countries. I've actually never had goat. I know it's like probably like a normal thing over in Pakistan, but I've never had goat. It's in the world. In fact, this one city produces about half the entire world's football or soccer balls. Otherwise, the nation is also thriving with wildlife. They have about 660 bird species, over 170 mammal species, including the, the national that? animal, the Markor. Mark, what? To finish off this segment like we always do, food. Some dishes yeah. you guys, the Pakistani jogger peeps suggested we mentioned include things like Baluchi style so Baluchi style, what is that, like a chicken or something? Let's think it's, um, all right. I guess we got like a rotisserie version of that here. Uh, okay. Looks like there's cheese and some kind of meat and some kind of pastry there. Looks pretty good. Beef and lamb corn. Yeah, I guess it kind of looks like Indian food a little bit is also popular. In the North, you see dishes closer to Iranian and Afghan cuisine like lamb and beef kebab. And all right. And Pashtun style rice. We all know the world famous Punjab cuisine. It's virtually the exact same as the Punjab in India. In the south, the Sindhi people will probably have more fish in their diets as they are on the coast. There's a lot of other cuisines we could have mentioned within the various ethnic groups, but that would take way too much time. We can, however, talk about the people groups in this right. next segment. Here we go. The Thank you, Noah. Now, the weird thing about the entire South Asian subcontinent is that when you look at the people, many of them look exactly alike and you would just assume they're basically relatives. I mean, you have Pakistani Punjabis and Indian Punjabis. Pakistani Kashmiris, Indian Kashmiris. They have the same languages and same cultural traditions and history and customs, and in most cases, they really are family. But when it comes to nationhood and worldview, the dichotomy makes a clear boundary that splits one side from the other. Hmm, keep talking, we're listening. First of all, the country has over 200 million people and is the sixth most populous nation in the world and second most populous Muslim nation after Indonesia. The country is very diverse in people groups, but the largest ones are the Punjabis at around 45%, Pashtuns in the north at about 16%, Sindhis in the south at about 14%, Saraikis at about 9%, and the rest are a mix of various other people groups like the Mujahirs. Okay, if you're from Pakistan and you're watching right now I, and you're feeling kind, leave me a comment. Let me know what demographic you fall under. I'd be very curious just to see just who watches these videos and what demographic that they're in. Okay, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different kinds. <laughs> I thought there was like two or I thought there was three. Apparently I was mistaken. Luchis and so on. They use the Pakistani rupee as their currency. They used to type C and D plug outlets and they drive on the left side of the road. Yeah, they were a former British colony. Now Pakistan has 74 listed individual languages spoken through. You guys got 74 different languages? 74. 
Oh my god, how do you guys understand each other? ...about the country, 66 of which are indigenous and 5 have over 10 million speakers each. Almost all of them are Indo-Aryan. How on earth do all the people of Pakistan stay interconnected? Well, yeah. today, much like India, the nation has two official languages used and taught in schools, used as lingua francas, Udu and English. Yeah, that's right, right. it's pronounced Udu, not Urdu. <laughs> For reference, Udu is basically the same thing as Hindi, except it has a few extra words and phrases borrowed from Persian and Arabic. It's also written in the Persian Arabic script. Here are some of you guys, the Pakistani geography peeps, explaining the subtle differences between Udu and Hindi. Hi, I'm Asya from Pakistan. Khatun is a woman in Urdu, and in Hindi it's Mahila, usually. Also, words like miracle, which is mojiza in Urdu, is chamatkar in Hindi. I'm Maha from Lahore. Some of the words, or more like sentences, are quite the same in both the languages. Like the word magician, in both Hindi and Urdu it's jadugar. But to a Pakistani and in Indian, the language differences are quite stark. Let's take thank you for example. In Hindi, you would say dhanewad, but in Urdu, you would say shukriya. Thanks, guys. Now, within the area. Oh, okay. okay, so <laughs> it seems like you guys break it down to at least just the two basic languages, even though there's so many. Um, still a little confusing. This is something like I kind of came across with some of the music reactions to Pakistan I was doing. Uh, they were talking about the phrasings and what things mean and stuff. And from whatever language they were speaking, because now I'm just not even sure which version of whatever language they were speaking. Uh, in English, the phrasing was completely different and certain words just didn't translate or mean the same thing. It's very confusing. But I guess you guys would have a better understanding of it if like one of your main languages is English. Maybe you guys can explain it better than I am I'm trying to in first I guess listen here. Areas that make up Pakistan today, there is no one type of Pakistani. They come in all different shapes and colors, but the general demographic configuration layout shows that the East is more Indo-Aryan and the West is more Persio-Iranian. We don't have time to explain the culture behind all the many people groups of Pakistan, but we can highlight the largest ones. Let's start off. Punjabis. They are the river people. The word Punjab even means land of five waters. They are the backbone of the Indus River Valley. They are known for having a lot of agriculture or artisan associated people, but basically Everyone knows that Punjabis are like the partiers of Pakistan. Hey, my kind of people. <laughs> Their cousins, the Saraiki of the South, are kind of like a weird fusion between Punjabis and Sindhis. They love cooking with these flowers and are famous for their... How do you cook with a flower? Is it like an herb or something? Is it like a, like a like basil? But it, it's a flower? Jumar dancing. Sindhis are the southerners of Pakistan that rule the Delta and the largest city, Karachi. They That's are kind beautiful. of known for being the money handlers, the business guys of Pakistan that keep the gears running on the financial side. Right. Can't have can't have a country of just people partying all the time. <laughs> Sufi Islam has a huge impact on Sindhi culture. Pashtuns. These are the same Pashtuns that we talked about in the very first Geography Now episode, Afghanistan. Ooh, remember those days. Ooh. They are an Iranic people group related to the Persians and Afghani groups, not Indo-Aryan. Many of them still follow Pashtun Wali, or the ancient self-governing tribal system that regulates everyday life activities in Pashtun communities. They have their own traditional clothing, festivals. Many celebrate Nowruz, the Persian New Year. And finally, <laughs> Baluchis. They are the cousins of the Pashtuns, another Iranian people group like the Pashtuns they have their own tribal societies according to tradition all the tribes are descended from one of the five children of Jalal Khan at one point there was kind of like a little bit of an insurrection amongst the Baluchi people for secession into an independent Baluchistan state they are the most mineral rich province in Pakistan which is why their women are known for wearing some of the most lavish jewelry and finally we have wow. to mention the cold mountain people such as the Kashmiris Baltis Wakis and so on Kashmiris are Indo-Aryan whereas Baltis are Sino-Tibetan nobody knows exactly what the Burushos are but they exist the hunza people live the longest and have a super healthy special diet the hunza people huh i wonder what their diet is what's their secret the Kalash people have lots of blondes and redheads and they practice a form of animism related to ancient hinduism and they're blondes and redheads you wouldn't expect that there are so many other people groups, but we don't have time. That's the gist of it. That's that's how you make a Pakistan. Otherwise, there are some traits that most Pakistanis kind of universally follow. And with that, right. here's Random Hannah to explain with culture stuff. In Pakistan, no matter what region you go to, you are very likely to see the traditional dress called Shadwar Kameez. They come in all different colors and designs. Okay, yeah, I've seen those. Those are like they're very elaborate designs and they're they're actually very beautiful. Very rarely do I see them in my day-to-day -day life over here, but in exploring different videos and whatnot, it's it's something I've noticed, and it's, it's um yeah, it's like almost hypnotic looking at them. India has Bollywood and... Yeah, so I've heard about Bollywood from some of my India reactions. 
Um, but apparently they got their own version, Lollywood. Pakistan has Lollywood, the term used for the film industry centered around Lahore, mostly producing Urdu-speaking films so everyone can understand. Pakistan oh, cool. also has the most active and numerous UN peacekeepers, usually working in Islamic countries to help as mediators in religious-based conflict. Speaking of which, they have the sixth largest military force in the world. They are famous oh, for shit. the Wagga border ceremony done- Dude, look at that guy. He almost just kicked himself in the face. Every day at the border with India. Many people know Pakistan and India as cricket powerhouses. However, they love field hockey and squash as well. They have right. the best performance in the world with four championships. And with squash, they have the most British Open squash championships and world championships as well. And finally, of course, at about 95% of the population adhering to it, Pakistani knights mostly under the Muslim faith. Nonetheless, the constitution guarantees freedom of religion and there are noticeable Hindu and Christian minorities. However, the constitution does limit political rights of non-Muslims. For example, the president and prime minister must always be Muslim. And now, oh. I'm sorry guys, but here's Keith with some music stuff. All right. In Pakistan, there are three main general genres you Here will hear go. commonly throughout the country. Traditional regional music, religious music, and modern music. A long time ago, before the European system was- I think what I just listened to is definitely more modern music with maybe like some traditional influences. Or maybe it was all three, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But it definitely seemed more modern adopted many places in the Indian subcontinent had a musical notation print called Swaralipi. It depicted notes, scales, and pitch. Raga music uses this a lot. Nonetheless, much of Pakistani music is based on improvisation and learned technique. Today, a lot of it did feel kind of like very jam bandy to me. Everything from Pakistani hip-hop, pop, and yes, even metal has been growing in the past few decades. I love how you were so pumped for half that sentence and then you <laughs> died at the end. Now, usually we don't sugarcoat everything here at Geography Now. I asked you guys, the Pakistani geography peeps, to explain some of the current issues Pakistan is facing today. They do yeah. have blasphemy laws enacted in their government system, which some see as a suppression of speech, illiterate- What is blasphemy laws? I'm gonna have to look into that. Apparently it's some kind of version of- Suppression of speech? I don't know. Do you guys agree with that? Are you guys happy with it? See, and unemployment can also be high in certain areas as well. I would imagine just some parts are probably just more rural. Like, they just might not have all, like, the jobs you might find in, like, a more densely populated area. Or maybe it's like, there's so many people in one area, there's just not enough jobs. I guess we kind of have that same problem here in America. Just like their neighbors, human trafficking, especially of the homeless and homeless children, has been widely documented. That's Many sad. officials like this guy are trying their best to fight against it. And finally... Again, we still have that same problem here in America. We've got a human trafficking problem here that's on the border with Mexico, and yeah, we got some issues ourselves. Yes, we all know that there is a controversy with the jihadist terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda that have been operating back and forth within regions of South Asia, often within Pakistani borders. This has been a constant struggle that the country has been facing. Their army has undergone numerous pursuits and clashes and battles against them. Terrorist attacks have killed over 30,000 people and caused over mm. $67 billion in damage. Luckily, it has been in decline since the peak in 2009. Whew, yeah, Pakistan has beautiful land and people, but to quote Poison, every rose has its thorn. Hey, mm. man, I'm the music guy, man, dude. Dude? Sorry, Mr. Chance. Anyway, we gotta move on. History. In the quickest way I can put it, Neolithic Mergar people, Indus Valley Civilization, Indo-Aryans migrate, Hinduism, Persians, Macedonians, Mauryans, a little bit of Buddhism comes in, weird confusing Indo-Greek Scythian Parthian kingdoms, more Hindu kingdoms, Arab Caliphate, Islam comes in, Turkic dynasty, Mongols, yeah, even the Mongols took a stab at it, weird regional kingdom era, Mughals, British, independence and partition, Pakistan is two parts, wars with India, Bangladesh breaks and doesn't want to be part of Pakistan anymore. First democratic transition from military rule. Coups, military tension, China deals, country grows, and here we are today. And finally, here are some famous people you guys, the Pakistani geography suggested we mention. Jahangir Khan, Sohail Abbas, Malala Yousafzai, a bunch of singers and- Do I recognize any of these guys? No, I don't. That's the thing, like in America, like we're just not subjected to this kind of stuff. Even like the, the athletes, the actors, like I don't recognize any of them. It's like if, if in a, when you're in your American bubble, like nothing else like gets in. It's it's all just the same recycled crap. I don't know any of these guys. And actors like these. Mm, yep, don't know who any of those guys are. People, there's just too many to mention. But one of the most famous ones would probably be Rahat Fatah Ali Khan. Now this guy I know. 
This guy I know, and he's absolutely incredible. I recently just found him, uh, I think it was a Nobel Peace uh, Prize concert. What a voice, what a talent. This guy is unbelievable. On so many politicians and army people like these, I'm just gonna put it on the screen for you, as well as all these sports and athletic people. Yeah, no idea. Mabuhul Haq, Mir Muhammad Ali Khan, Abdul Qadir Khan, Abdul Salam, and Shahid Khan. A lot of poets and religious figures like these, but this right. one, Alama Iqbal, probably being one of the most prominent ones. Yeah, so many notable famous Pakistanis. I'm pretty sure a lot of people around the world have heard of them, which brings us to the world relations, which brings I us to- I have not. Now you have to understand, Pakistan was kind of like a constructed state to consolidate religious communities in a former empire, so that means with Pakistan, a lot of their diplomacy depends on strategy. For one, even though they were a former colony, they still have a somewhat neutral-ish kind of amicable relationship with the UK. The UK has the largest population of Pakistanis in Europe, many come from the Mirpur oh. district, and you can still see much of the cultural influences in their society, such as cricket and driving on the left. They have generally good relations with the Gulf countries like the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, many Pakistanis moved there for work as expats. The past few years though, there has been some controversy with mistreatment of Pakistanis and other expats by certain companies, but overall the governments get along at least. Afghanistan and Iran are like their love-hate cousins. During terrorist conflict years, Pakistan took in millions of Afghan refugees that are essentially brothers of the Pashtuns in the north. It remains a constant issue though that they are facing to this day. Iran is also a key figure in business and trade as well as supplying oil and other imports. India and Bangladesh also have a somewhat love-hate relationship. It's more like they hate the governments but love the people. India oh. and Pakistan of course have so much history together, even before British colonial years. As mentioned, many of the people groups there share the same language and culture, the only thing essentially separating them is religion. Bangladesh of course broke away from Pakistan after the partition years and favored India shortly after independence. This kind of angered Pakistan at first, but decades later they've kind of moved on and have good relations once again. In terms of their best friends, however, many Pakistanis might kind of end up saying Turkey or China. Essentially what it comes down to is a kind of standoff against India. When one giant leaves you drama, you kind of settle for the other one. Together, they have the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Project, in which they allow them to use the port of Gwadar for their development and trade deals funded by China. Each country's people are welcomed in each other's, and visits are common. With Turkey, though, they've kind of always had a respect for the people, culture, and history, TV shows, and movies. They support the government and have many diplomatic business ties with them. This, of course, by default, also brings in Azerbaijan, Turkey's little brother. They love to travel to both of these nations and even go so far as to support Azerbaijan's side in the controversial disputes with Armenia. In conclusion, Pakistan may have been formed in the 40s, but you have millennia of backstory with this place. Pakistan, yeah. it is what it is. Go for it. Stay tuned. Palau is coming up next. All right. Okay, so that is a very quick, brief history of Pakistan. Um, Obviously, Geography Now just kind of gives you like fast tidbits of information that sometimes leaves me with more questions than answers. Uh, but I think they do a great job of kind of explaining everything in its very simplest terms, uh, especially for a guy like me that just knows next to nothing about all of this. But this was a fascinating episode. Um, I was surprised by just the general geography and how many different landscapes you guys have. Uh, the scenery looks absolutely beautiful. Some of the food I think I've, I've had before. Or, or, or variations of it. I, I've had like like Indian food before. I don't know if it's quite the same thing, uh, but it looked somewhat similar. Um, let's see here. A lot of the famous people I did not recognize, but that's just because, like I said, we're over here in our American bubble, and for whatever reason, we just it's just not something that's readily available for us. We have to kind of go out and search for it, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, overall, it seems pretty cool. Apparently, there's definitely some tensions here and there, especially that north zone, and there's you know some wars that have been going on that I just didn't even know about. Uh, but I guess I'm gonna go research them right now, or, or try and find a video to research them. Uh, the history itself seems pretty varied, um, knowing that, you know, apparently it was somewhat formed in the 40s or the new variation of it was kind of interesting uh, compared to like how old it is. You know, they, they were saying it like some of like Pakistan in general, like like dwarfs even the pyramids, which is pretty dang cool. Um, the people look pretty cool. Uh, the language thing was kind of <laughs> blew my mind a little bit. Uh, I guess that when it's broken down into two basic languages, you can understand. But I'm just like. 
thinking of like millions of people just speaking 60 or 70 different languages and um, how confusing that would be. But apparently you guys get it somehow. Um, yeah, no, it seems pretty cool. It seems like, it, you know, there's a lot of things that I see that are similar with us with America that we share with our borders that like people are pissed off about or don't get along with. Um, the religious things, it's a huge thing. What it really comes down to is even though we're a world away and we might just seem like completely different people, we're all just dealing with the same shit, you know, just in different ways, in different ways. Is really all it is. But um, in Pakistan looks absolutely beautiful. The food looks delicious. The people seem pretty cool, uh, especially the partiers, you know. Uh, but yeah, no, this was, uh, this was definitely an interesting little watch here. I think I've got a little bit more investigated to go to do and learn a little bit more about the history and maybe be even more about some of the media forms you guys have, some of the movies and things like that that are, uh, you know, culturally prevalent. But uh, yeah, I feel like I learned a lot from this one. So big shout out to Geography Now. I'll be sure to link them down in the description. And if you enjoyed hanging out with me and listening to me ramble on and just get confused at all of this, uh, please consider liking and subscribing. And even better, if you feel like clarifying anything for me, uh, please put it down in the comments or anything else you'd like to share about Pakistan. If you're from Pakistan or you, you know, have any information about your upbringing or your day-to-day -day life or anything like that, uh, I'd love to hear from you. If, if you don't mind sharing a comment and maybe your story. I go through all the comments and I read them, so I'd appreciate it, guys. But that's going to do it for me here today. Hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, I'll see you all the next one. Bye, everybody.